Aviator Farah. It's a cosplay that I absolutely love wearing and it makes me feel like a superhero every time I do. But these wings are almost three meters wide when they're fully extended, meaning that you kind of feel trapped in the convention hall. They're more suitable for a performance or on stage. And what's worse, they're quite difficult to travel with because they don't fit in a suitcase, imagine that. The other parts of this cosplay are still worthy of being seen up close, so I need to come up with a solution that would let me walk around as Farah a bit more free. So with that in mind, I came up with a design for a smaller, sleeker set of wings, which is compatible with everything that I've built so far, but still has some extra tricks and features. My new wings are, of course, heavily based on the original Aviator Farad design that I love so much, but there's still plenty of my own voice in there. I really went for this Top Gun F-15 sort of very analog feel, um, exposed pipes and oil, sort of hot rod blue jeans vibe, if that makes sense. The main special feature for these are of course these two crazy powerful blower fans that I found that both look and sound so cool in person like you wouldn't believe, but uh, more on those later. I modeled all the parts to fit my smallish 3D printers, but it still took quite a few days to get everything done. The main wing surfaces were too large to print in a single go, so I'm gluing them from parts. To make them join up seamlessly, I'm setting the soldering iron to low heat and I'm using the same filament that I used to print the parts in to weld the plastic together. After a rough pass with the sander, I mark off the defects that I still need to fix and fill in. Um, there aren't that many holes and cracks in real aircraft wings, so mine shouldn't have them either. I use this two component polyester filler that I bought in a car supply shop. It's quite fine and it cures fast and it sands super easy. It's almost like chalk. After all the preparations, now we can move on to something more exciting. Um, these are inline blower fans, so 12 volts, 270 CFM. So they are quite on the edge of what I can safely power with the existing electronics. The air output of these guys will be like a, something like a decent leaf blower, so the effect should be quite impressive. Um, but sadly, I need to modify them slightly to fit the wings just because the way I designed them. So let's tear these down. I think the next logical step for me is to work on the remote control because I have to have a way somehow to, you know, test the electronics as I build them. So uh, yeah, remote control. The original remote has three buttons for all the animatronics, so I'm adding three buttons in the new one too. However, there's a new addition, this trigger. Essentially, it will act as a valve for electricity running to the fans. The harder you press the trigger, the faster the fans will spin. I made the original electronics with similar functionality in mind, so all I need to do now is to make sure that I connect the right cables to the existing ones in the system, and this way, essentially, it will be all plug and play. Check this out. <laughs> now this feels like the right time for me to reveal my strategy behind the lighting effects. Uh, my one gripe with the original Farrow wing design is that the LEDs are quite recessed into the wing bodies, making them hard to see in daylight, especially like when the wings are folded down, they're really invisible. In my original design, I decided to have the LEDs quite more exposed. Furthermore, do you see this cone? Well, this is not only just for cool looks or something, it's meant to disperse the light before it hits the floor, so it should be even more visible in daylight. The first set of LEDs will do the orange regular glow like before, but the new ones will be blue and will be linked to the motors for this jet afterburner effect. When I'll be revving the motors with a new remote, um, the motors will spin, but they will not stop immediately when I let go of the trigger. They'll still spin out of inertia a little bit. But the lights, they will darken immediately because the power is cut. So to not ruin the impression of afterburners being real, because in an actual jet it would sort of taper off and gradually dissipate as the jets would you know, cool down and everything. So we can't have that ruining the impression. Enter capacitors. You can think of them as tiny temporary batteries or like buffers or something. Essentially, once the power will be disconnected, they will still retain like a tiny bit of charge, just enough for the LEDs to sort of slowly dim down instead of being cut off immediately. And I think it's worth the effort because it will really sort of round off and make this whole effect more believable, so why not? <laughs> you can see how much power the capacitors are storing by how slow the LEDs deplete them. With all the pieces of the puzzle more or less in front of me, it's time to see this thing finally come to life. I apply different color primers to certain parts, just like I did with the, all the other armor parts, just so the colors would be consistent. 
For example, a white base makes the yellow nice and sunny, while a glossy black makes the metallics pop. To mimic heat discoloration on the nozzles, I airbrush on some different colors. Um, steel goes from this pale straw gold all the way up to blue when heated up, so that's what I'm after. To make the lighting a little bit more interesting, I decided to add an LED strip inside the motor chamber. Um, it's orange, but slightly different shade of orange than the rings, so it should have a pretty cool effect. To make everything look nice and clean, of course I modeled in some wire management channels. Uh, these little tunnels will help route the wires from the LEDs and let them sit flush. With 3D printing you can get really good tolerances so the LED modules are just press fit into place, and any visible wires are covered up with some white tape. Just like the original wings, the jump jet version will also have LEDs that change colors depending on the remaining battery capacity. These intake vents will serve as wire and connector storage point. To make everything removable, I had to add a bunch of plugs, which meant that there was an extra bulk that had to go somewhere. Instead of a single big plug, I used a few small plugs so they would fit through the tubes. Um, that should make the removing of the motors for travel quite painless. So originally, for the inner wing surfaces, I planned on adding these armor plates, because the space otherwise felt so plain and boring. However, I decided to airbrush on a little scoreboard instead, just for some extra flavor. Also, Farah is an Egyptian character, so of course I had to add an Eye of Horus too. Um, you know, for protection. But it still felt like the project needed some extra personality, so I decided to add a mascot, kinda how World War II bombers had nose art. I spent some time in Photoshop and came up with this cheeky pinup. I printed it out on the glossy vinyl and sliced it out by hand. To keep the text in line and spaced right, I used some painter's tape. Now to really make a convincing impression, let's tie it together with some scratches, weathering and dirt. I apply some chrome metallic paint on the edges and corners where the paint would naturally chip off, you know, by itself, and I add some grime and dirt to crevices where it would naturally gather by itself as well. I usually just use diluted matte black paint because it dries and stains like, you know, real dirt. And pre-made washes are super handy too sometimes, like um, rusting agents, though it really depends on what kind of look I'm going for. Airbrushing on some shadows will make a part look more three-dimensional from afar, which is nice. And it's also a good way to fake exposure to smoke or dust. I add a tiny bit of smoke staining on the yellow parts so they would look more consistent. A few more touch-ups, and they're ready for the grand reveal. So there it is. Jump Jet Aviator Fair. I don't know about you, but I think the wings turned out just great. I like that this project made me think outside the box even more so than usual, um, with design considerations as well as engineering ones. Uh, it was fun trying to work my own stylistic and aesthetic choices into an existing project, and I think that the original Farah designers would like my version too. I'm just really impressed with how much more comfy this version is. I think the most significant addition to comfort was all the extra EVA foam that I added underneath the straps. Um, it helps with the weight distribution and the entire harness feels much more sort of secure on my body. Another thing that makes it more comfortable is the length of the wings, because these are so much shorter, I don't feel like I'm being tugged backwards when they're uh, contracted. With the old ones, I would have to be very mindful of all the momentum that I would have to withstand and brace myself every time I would trigger an animation. And with these, it's much more predictable and uh, secure feeling, so it's much more fun in that way too. I'm really happy how all the details fit in and how the wings look consistent with the rest of the outfit. Um, I might add a few more touch-ups and uh, a bit more weathering and dirt to make it more interesting to look at up close. I think it's a sign of a good cosplay when it doesn't um, you know, fall apart visually when you look up close. Um, but yeah, so far so good and I can't wait to wear it in public. shaking when I'm revving the motors. It's a weird feeling. 
and I'm especially stoked with how the LEDs turned out because they're just so much more in your face and actually visible. Um, it's exactly what I wanted. These wings are smaller, sure, but uh, I think they fit my frame well, and in person I think they'll definitely leave an impression. So, another big project is finally done, and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how such a thing even comes together, and maybe even learned a thing or two. Um, I already have some ideas for upcoming future videos, so I encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you want to see for yourself. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, you can of course uh, leave a like and a comment if you have some uh, comments or thoughts about today's video. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Wow, what a great video, I agree. If you would like to see more of my stuff, I made a lot of videos over the years, so here's a few links for you to click on. Ooh, editing, editing, editing. <laughs>